today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the other great shows that previously aired, log on to dentallyspeaking.com or iTunes, keywords Dr. Kabitko or Dentally Speaking. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dentally Speaking. This is show number 364. It's a great day. It's going to be a beautiful day. Hey, let me just tell you that today's show is about Cancer Can't Stop Christmas. It's the event that happened on December 26th, and it is put on by the Cancer Option Collaborative. And we're going to hear interviews from that event that I went to. Let me tell everybody that we're also streaming live on www.ustreamtv.com. That is with a U, streamtv.com. Go to the home page, go all the way to the bottom, click on watch, search for Dentally Speaking, and you'll see us. Okay, and as a holiday gift to you, we only have three days left on this. We've been offering a 20% discount at the office on all services not covered by insurance through the end of the year. That's why I say there's only a couple days left, three days. Some st- restrictions apply, so call 262-9588 for details. Okay, let's go ahead with today's show entitled Cancer Can't Stop Christmas 2014. So as you know, we had Mary Jenkins on our show a couple times in November, and we were talking about her event. Every year she does Cancer Can't Stop Christmas. She invited me to come down to the actual event, which is in a secret location. Oh, you hear those bells? And it turns out Mr. and Mrs. Claus are here, Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus. And I thought Mary was going to have one of those uh, mall Santa Clauses come, you know, but she didn't tell me that it was the real one. So first of all, Santa, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. You must be tired. Oh, yes. We slept all day yesterday. Because I thought that you would be all done, that you would be back home sleeping already, and here it is, December 26th, and you guys have one more event that you wanted to do, right? Right. We flew in from the North Pole just for this event. On your sleigh? Flew in on an airplane. Oh, okay, okay. Reindeer only fly one night a year. Okay, the magic's only good for one night a year. I wondered about that. And so, let's see, you probably had a private jet. Somebody came and got you, right? Yes, we did. It was very plush. I've seen the inside of some of those. All right, so tell me about this event. How did you guys learn about it, and why is it that you make such a special effort? to come and help with Cancer Can't Stop Christmas. I happened to see an article in the paper about the first event coming up, and I called Mary Jenkins and asked her if she had a Santa Claus, and she said, no, they didn't, and I said, we'd be more than happy to help them out, and that was the first year. You know, she didn't know you were really married to Santa Claus at the time. She probably thought you were sending one of those fake ones, right? (laughs) No, no, no. She knew we were married. We've been married almost 54 years. Oh, wow. And we've been doing Santa for 27. Wow. And I'm a twice cancer survivor, so I know that it's very important. Wow, okay, that's a really special connection because if you hadn't been cured, you wouldn't be here to help these children and these... uh, Oh, and and also Santa's a cancer survivor. Tell me about that. Yes, I'm a cancer survivor too, about 14 years. Wow, that's really neat. And I was talking to a cancer survivor. We were texting back and forth and she was telling me about how hectic her life was and she had to go for chemotherapy and she's moving and her daughter got sick and there were all these kinds of things and she said something in her text to the effect of, when will this stop? And I said, well, you know what? It sounds like you're describing life, and you don't really want it to stop. You'd like it to be a little smoother, of course, but you don't really want it to stop, right? Right. I mean, you know, it's nice to be able to complain sometimes. True. So uh, I have a saying that, and it goes, it's never so bad that it couldn't be worse. What do you think about that? Oh, I think that's so true, because no matter where we are in life, there's someone else who is suffering more than we are. Right, and so we want to help them if we can. We want to be there for them, and it just it makes you feel good inside, and I think that actually helps people heal, doesn't it? When you yes, it does. Yeah. It helps them a long ways. Just knowing that somebody cares. Exactly, exactly. And I was just in the room where the families are, and they are beginning to have dinner, and there were a little bit of tears as Mary kicked off the event. And there were these two little girls, they both came running to her. She picked them up, and the one was playing with her Santa hat while she was talking, and it's just so moving. So you guys have been married 54 years. Was there a time, Mrs. Claus, when you thought you were going to lose Mr. Claus? No, we were very lucky that his cancer was diagnosed early, and with treatment, everything went well. What about you? 
lose Santa? I think you might lose. I was worried about Mrs. Claus. You were? Yes, I was. Especially round two? Round two, yes. Was it the same cancer, same area of the body? No. Oh. Second time was pancreas. The first time was breast cancer. Oh, my goodness. You went from breast cancer to pancreatic. Pancreatic cancer, I've heard, can be very uh, terrible and not as easy to survive, but you did. Mm -hmm. I was very, very lucky. We caught it early. No symptoms at all. I had a cough, and I went in to x-ray my chest for the cough, and they had x-rayed a little farther down and happened to find it. It's just a fluke. Wow. So it's good that you sought out care because you had that cough. Now, one of the reasons I had Mary on my show was a dental show, so we were talking, and I asked her, I said, because her organization, as you know, Cancer Option Collaborative, helps people in need while they have cancer, so for their rent or utility bill or something. And I said, well, what if somebody had a terrible toothache and they needed to see a dentist, but they didn't have the money or didn't have dental insurance or, or both? And she said, yep, we would work to try to solve that need. So I thought that was so neat. And I think we even have somebody here today that she was telling me about that uh, has a dental need, so we'll probably be talking about that a little bit later. Santa, when you almost lost Mrs. Claus, what kind of thoughts go through your head? You just wonder what you're going to do. Because you'd be alone, right? Right, without Mrs. Claus. Yeah, and I know that there seems to be this, I don't know, I don't know what you want to call it, but we all think about would it be worse to lose a sibling? Would it be worse to lose a child? Would it be worse to lose a, a, a spouse? And I don't think we ever really want to find out, though, huh? No, we really don't. <laughs> no. So do you always have that beard, or do you shave it for the rest of the no. year? I've had this beard for 43 years. Wow, well, I thought you might want to be incognito the rest of the year. So everywhere you go, people kind of know you're Santa, don't All they? All year round. All year round. As you know, I was at the uh, Clintonville tree lighting ceremony. I'm in the Clintonville Rotary, and we do this tree lighting ceremony every year at the Park of Roses. And we had a kind of a mall Santa come to, to be with the children. And then this gentleman walked in with just a little red hat like yours and a perfectly grown beard like yours. And he happened to have a, he was basically in street clothes. And I'm thinking, I think the real Santa might be here. Did you come to that event? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I think I saw you there. Because <laughs> I was telling my wife, I said, look, that's the real Santa. So anyway, what's uh, your favorite part about working with this organization? Just to see the joy on the children's faces. A couple of years ago, we had a little boy who had a leg amputated and he was fighting cancer and he died, oh, a couple of weeks after Christmas. And so we knew in our hearts that we'd made Christmas happy for him. So that was what was important. Yeah, yeah, that must have been, I mean, you didn't know he was going to pass away, but certainly I know what you're talking about because when you hear of somebody that's uh, passed away, if they were doing something they loved, then it, it seems a little better. It's still tragic, but at least it seems a little better. How about you, Santa? Oh, yes. Uh, if we can help, we'll help. You know, We're here to help, here to make him happy. Now, I understand that, was it uh, Hermie wanted to be a dentist? Did he ever go on to become a dentist? <laughs> yes, it was Hermie in the, the, the Lost Toys, the Land of Lost Toys, yes. Yeah. And the, he did definitely want to be a dentist. Do we know if he's practicing somewhere? Does he practice up at the North Pole? Well, he did graduate from dental school. And he does take care of the elves, and we love that. He's got a wonderful little office set up in the back part of the toy shop. Good. So when the elves are working, if they need any help, he's right there. Perfect. That's what I want to know, because everybody needs great dental care, right? Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, I know you guys are going to be very busy soon enough, because you probably have to hand out gifts to all of these deserving children. So thank you so much for coming, and I feel so honored that I got to meet the real Santa. You're welcome. Glad we're here. And thank you, Mrs. Club. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. So hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. So you're here at Cancer can't stop Christmas. Can you tell me your name? My name is Misty. So Misty, what brought you to this event? Well, I started fighting breast cancer in late 2013. I finished chemo at the end of August and I'm still in radiation and one of the doctor's assistants told me about Cancer Can't Stop Christmas and they referred me and I'm here. Cool. So uh, there was a time when you thought you wouldn't be able to have a great Christmas, huh? Oh yeah, several times. So this is really, really nice. And you have two children? Yes. Justice, she is seven and Chase, which will be ten soon. Okay. Okay. And your husband over there, what's his name? His name's Christian. He had a birthday yesterday. Oh, Christian had a birthday yesterday. That's the same day as Shelly Meyer. Did you know that? And the same as Mary Jenkins, she just told us. So that I should have known that. Yeah, it's nice. You know, and everybody here has their own struggles, so I'm, I'm comfortable and so it's good. That's good. That's good. So Mary's organization is so special because it actually helps the people that currently have cancer. I didn't realize that all of the money raised for research kind of goes to help the people that don't have it yet. Yeah, it goes for the research to help find a cure, but the ones who are fighting it are left sometimes financially. It's hard on us, and a lot of times, like myself, you know, I won't be able to go back to work until probably March or April sometimes, so when you go from two incomes down to one, it's hard. So. Wow, so three, four months off work? Well, it's been since chemo. I got really ill, so I've been off for about four or five months, but I'm one of the lucky ones I get to go back. Some people lose their jobs, and, and there is no special treatment for those who do have cancer.
answer, even in the workforce. Okay, so it's neat that they have french fries and the macaroni and cheese and chicken fingers and all those things that families love, right? Yeah, it's really nice. It's just an emotional night, too. I'm just really happy, relieved, and happy to see other people that kind of are in my shoes, and they understand you don't even have to say anything. It's just something unspoken. Right, right. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me. So I have... Stefania Bell. Stefania Bell? Stefania. Oh, Stefania. Yeah. Did I say it right? You did. And you're a volunteer with Can't You Can't Stop Christmas, right? Yes, I am. And how long have you been doing this? This is my first year. How'd you get involved? Uh, my girlfriend, Chris, dragged me from dinner here. Oh, really? <laughs> so right from dinner to another dinner? From dinner to another dinner. <laughs> That's like a brother from another mother or something. And she is. <laughs> oh, she is? Okay. All right. So how much do you know about the organization? I know that they're helping families know the way the organization works, but this was different for me this year because I was actually wrapping gifts for children whose family members were suffering from cancer. So it's a blessing and um, it's very enlightening and humbling to be able to wrap a gift for someone who is less fortunate in fulfilling their list or something that they want. All excited for when that's going to happen here soon, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to be in the room too, so it's really neat. So did you know when you were doing the Race for the Cure that that charity didn't help families that actually had cancer? I did not. I was just amazed when I learned that. That's, I am as well. And I don't think that raising money for research is a bad thing. It just th seems like there ought to be a portion of those funds set aside to help people that actually have it. Totally agree. But I guess it's something about they'd have to change their charter. Or I'm not sure what they need to do, but it needs to be done. It needs to be done immediately because it's enough when you're losing health. It appears as though you're losing life. Then to have to turn around and lose your home or not be able to provide for your family, it's a greater stress. Yeah, and, and I think we all know that stress can make us unhealthy. Yeah, contributed to what they already have, yes. Right. I mean, I think they've done studies that prove that pets make you calm, make you pull through a disease better, or being married helps you live longer because you don't have as much stress. So clearly, if you're under stress because of bills and those kinds of things, when you're undergoing cancer therapy, it seems like it would slow your recovery. Absolutely. I yeah. agree. So, hey, thank you so much for speaking with me. Well, thanks, Stefan. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So now I'm with Chris. Chris, what's your what's your full name? Krista, K-R-I-S-T-A, last name White. Krista White. Okay. So I'm sorry, but they call you Chris? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what brings you to this event? Mary Jenkins. Okay. So you're helping Mary put this on? Yes, I'm a volunteer. And how long have you been doing this? This is my first year. Oh, okay. Okay. What do you think so far? Absolutely phenomenal. Did you help wrap the presents or help Santa wrap the presents? Yeah, we helped in the wrapping room wrap the presents. <laughs> and it's an all-day event, right? I mean, getting ready. Yes. Yes. I think the first crew got here around two. Wow. Now, is Mary the only person that you know that actually is a cancer survivor, or do you have others that maybe made you want to volunteer for this? Actually, I know others that are cancer survivors, but Mary is the one that I'm primarily connected to at this time. Okay. So you think you'll be back in next year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. It's really neat to see these kids, and they haven't seen Santa yet, but I have, and it's the real Santa. Wow. I, you know, it just gives you so much joy to see children like this get to do stuff that they they probably otherwise wouldn't be able to. And if you think about it, he doesn't have anything else to do. He's already delivered all the presents, so it really could be the real Santa, right? It could be. He could have saved the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> and we're at a secret location, which we're not allowed to tell, which makes it even more special because that means only Santa knew. Yep. And him and Mrs. Claus were telling me that they uh, the reindeer only fly in the sleigh once a year, so they had to actually take an airplane. <gasps> wow. I'm assuming it was a private jet, I, I assume. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, Chris, well, thank you so much for speaking with me. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So soon we're going to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, and the winner's going to receive free flowers from Vice Timber Florist. You may want to remember that Santa and Mrs. Claus flew into town on a jet to bring gifts to the children at Cancer Can't Stop Christmas 2014. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. All right, and the question of the day is, Santa and Mrs. Claus just visited the children at Cancer Can't Stop Christmas 2014. How did they arrive in Columbus? Was it A, in Santa's sleigh pulled by reindeer, B, on a bus, C, on a train, or D, on a private jet. All right, the winner receives free flowers from Vice Timber Florist, delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 459-9769. That's 459-9769. So go ahead and call now. 
Stay tuned to Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko. I bet everyone knows someone who is afraid of the dentist. In fact, 40% of Americans don't go to the dentist on a regular basis. The number one reason? Fear. Well, take heart. Here at Dr. Kavitko & Associates, we've been doing intravenous sedation since 1985, and we offer several sedation options, so we're certain we can help you. Want to be sedated for a filling? We do that. Want to be sedated for a cleaning? We do that. How about a root canal or a crown? We can sedate you for those too. Give us a call at 614-262-9588 or go to drkavitko.com. Uh, vous écoutez à la radio du dentiste avec Dr. Kavitko ici sur votre radio préférée. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. A lot of people ask me if I'm accepting new patients. They know I've been practicing for 34 years, so they assume I'm not. Well, guess what? They're wrong. I do accept new patients. After all, if I'm doing my job correctly, I get my patients healthy, so all they need is routine exams, cleanings, and the occasional filling or two. So that leaves me free to take care of you. So yes, I do accept new patients, and I would love to treat you, your family, and your friends. Give my office a call at 614-262-9588 or go to drkavitko.com. We're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have four callers on the line, and we decided to just uh, uh, pick a number off the air because we have kind of a tight time frame today. So we're going to go with caller number two, David. Hey, David, how are you? We decided to just uh, uh, pick a number off the air because it's not Oh, I think you're listening to your radio, aren't you, David? David, turn off your radio. Oh, sorry. Okay. It's <laughs> off. Okay, good, good. So do you have an answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? Um, I think he came in the reindeer. Ooh, that's not right. Okay, oh. it's, uh, so let's go to the next caller. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next caller. Who do we have? Sherry? Or? Hello? Oh, oh okay. Caller number three. Yes, Sherry, are you there? I am. Okay, good. Do you have the correct answer? I think so. He came on an airplane. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I thought that might trip somebody up. So, hey, Linda, David, Jeff, call back next week. But, Sherry, you are the winner, so stay on the line. We're going to get your information so that you can get those flowers from Vice Denver, okay? Thank you. All right, and thanks for listening. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's. if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko, and today we are listening to interviews I conducted at Cancer Can't Stop Christmas 2014 back on December 26th. All right, so I'm, I'm with a lady named Stephanie Francis, and the reason I'm whispering is because the kids are all decorating stockings. They're putting their name on these stockings. They have the puff glue, right, the glitter glue and all that stuff. And do you have any children over there? Yes, I have three children, three daughters over there. Three of those are yours? Yes. Oh, well, which, which three? Joelle, Socora, and Judea. So what brought you here today? Mary Jenkins and I have known each other for years. We used to go to church together. I have a recent cancer diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Stage two. I had a bone marrow transplant in July, so I'm in remission right now. Good. That's good. Yes, that's a great thing. I'm very happy about it. Now, when do they expect you'll be back to functioning normal life again for you? Mm, normal life is a ways off. There's no cure for uh, multiple myeloma. Okay, so that means you can't work? Correct. I'm on permanent disability. Okay. And you underwent all that treatment, and how do you feel? I feel fantastic right now. I also have a condition called avascular necrosis. Obviously, the vessels, they don't send enough blood to the area? Exactly, in the hips. In so your hips. I've had to have two hip replacements. <laughs> Hence the cane. Hence the cane. <laughs> the cane was just to beat off the guys. Nah. <laughs> oh, and then nice. <laughs> no. That or it's filled with alcohol and oh, it's got no. a little hidden pump. <laughs> Unfortunately. No, I'm kidding. You know, they make those, I've heard. <laughs> Do they? Never heard of that. <laughs> You know, they're hollow, so why not put something in there, right? Never heard of that. <laughs> anyway, so what did you do for a living before you weren't able to do that for a living? I worked for the state health department. Seriously? The Ohio Department of Health. So they have all would be understanding, right? Well, no, not really. No? I actually worked in the cancer prevention and control program. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Very serious. And I actually left my job because I had exhausted all of my disability leave. And I had an ultimatum, either be terminated or resign. Really? That doesn't seem right, especially from that agency when you work in that department. For 10 years. Wow, wow. Very difficult and challenging situation. So how are you getting by now, can I ask? Or if I can't, you tell me. <laughs> you can. Very tentatively, and I say that because everything is up in the air. I haven't worked for a year and a half, so I have no income. I've had the benevolence of family and friends to help me, but eight months behind on rent, and I don't have 
have money for utilities, but somehow every month I am able to make it, and my landlord is an angel because she hasn't evicted me. You know, this is the kind of thing that Mary first brought to my attention when we had her on the show back in November, and so you're the living embodiment of that. And, I mean, I feel so bad, and I, but I'm so happy that Mary has discovered this, this uh, big crack, I guess, that people are falling through. It is definitely a crack and a gap, and Mary is filling it tremendously. I knew her when she started Christians Overcoming Cancer, and I thought it was a fantastic idea to meet the financial needs of cancer patients in treatment, in active treatment. I think that it's a wonderful gap filler. And I know that there is paperwork involved, there's a form, there is documentation, so you can't just say I'm behind on my rent. You actually have to prove it to her, right? Yes, absolutely. For people that might be thinking of donating, that's one of the questions they want answered is, is the money really going for what people say it's going for, and is it the people that getting the money, do they really need it? Yeah. But there is a process that they just, just, just doesn't just open up the uh, the treasure chest. Right, absolutely. And she is a 501c3, so everything does have to be documented for her safety and the safety of the people who receive the, the service um, from her organization. Okay. Well, I'm so honored to actually be allowed to come here and talk to folks like you and learn more about it. And I wish it was a TV show in one sense, because I'd love to show these kids just having so much fun. And I'm thinking you're having more fun than them because you get to see the joy on their face? I get to watch them, yes. And it, it's Christmas morning all over again. They're having a wonderful time, and I'm glad that this is taking place because I had a financial need this Christmas, and it was a very challenging time for the first time in my life, in my children's lives, not to be able to provide for them the way that I am accustomed to providing for them around the holidays. Right, the first Christmas you were able to kind of get by because you hadn't been off work that much, but now it's becoming a cumulative. Yes, absolutely. So the prognosis for you, or rather the future for you, is right now you feel great, and uh, is it a matter of until you start feeling bad again, you get to go on with your life, or do you have to still see the doctor every so often? I do still see the doctor periodically, every six or so weeks. Um, I do take a maintenance drug called Revlimid, and it's a low-dose chemotherapy drug to keep the remission in place as long as possible. And the next step, I guess, would be another bone marrow transplant. I'm not real sure but they've told me I have five years, but I believe better than that. Right, because I was talking about this earlier today with my, my mother-in-law, who was, I think, 84, 85, and she was talking about some somebody that was 105 and was riding a bike and or doing some kind of a race, and we agreed the only way to live to 105 is to try. That's right, and I intend to live and not die before I'm dead. Exactly. That's a good way of putting it. That's really cool. That's really cool. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me and sharing your story. I really appreciate it, and maybe we can raise some more money for the foundation. My pleasure, and I hope so. I hope to be able one day soon to make a significant contribution. Can't do it right now, but I do plan to in the future to help others as Mary has helped me. Perfect, perfect. Love to hear it. <laughs> Take care now. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So, Stephanie, I hope you don't mind me asking, but I happen to notice that you have a couple chips in two of your front teeth. Can I assume that that had something to do with your cancer? Did you take a fall because of the your hip or your leg or something? Actually, my teeth became very brittle about a year before I was diagnosed and I chipped my tooth on something like a cracker or something very not very hard really and I had shingles six months before I was diagnosed I had all of these illnesses in the last six years I've just been continually ill I'm particularly sensitive about my teeth because I've always been told I had such beautiful teeth I've never worn braces or anything and I like to smile a lot and so my smile is really not as it was. So the, the chip teeth happened before your cancer diagnosis, but you didn't get them fixed. Why was that? Because I didn't have the money. Okay, so even before the diagnosis, even before cancer, yeah. things were tight. Yeah. Well, I was, I left my job in September of 2013. I was diagnosed in March of 2013. Oh, okay, okay. And when did you chip them? I chipped my tooth probably in October. After leaving the job? Yeah, after leaving the job. Oh, okay. It seemed like my whole body just started falling apart. I was falling because of the a avascular necrosis of the hip, and then my teeth were brittle and bones and everything. It just seemed like my body was falling apart. Interesting. Okay. I felt that way before, too, but uh, so far, at least, been able to get by. <laughs> and you don't look that old. You said somebody your age. Are you in your early 40s? I'm 45. I turned 45 December 20th. So I was pretty close. Yeah. And you don't quite look 45, <laughs> so that's good. That's good. Thank you. I think your smile is still pretty neat, even with the little chips, but... But uh, maybe you can get those fixed.
Olympics someday, too. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> so I'm Dr. Kavika. You're Melissa what? Melissa Elliott. Melissa Elliott. Okay, so how'd you hear about this uh, this event? Um, actually, my next-door neighbor, her son has leukemia, so she had told me when she found out that I had breast cancer. Oh, interesting. Okay. And how long have you been dealing with it? Actually, I got diagnosed November 7th. Of this year? And had surgery December 15th. Oh, my goodness. So, oh, you must still be sore. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very sore. That's why I can't pick him up. <laughs> this is a pretty cool event, huh? Yes, it is. What do you do for a living, or what did you do I until you took off? I stay home with the kids. So that's almost harder, because although yeah, you haven't lost, your husband has to miss work, right? Yeah, he's taken off three weeks. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, well, he's done everything. <laughs> he's become Mr. Mom yes. and all that stuff. Well, that's really neat. That's, that's really neat. Everybody, he has to get all four of us dressed, all four of us out the door. <laughs> well, you did a nice job. They're all, yeah. uh, all dressed for Christmas. Yep. Looks like I need to let you go, but hey, thank you so much thank for talking you. with me. No problem. Thank you. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. I'm intensely dedicated to providing the absolute best dental care. The word mediocre isn't in my vocabulary. I just won't take shortcuts. Isn't that what you want in the person you trust with sharp objects in your mouth? Of course it is. However, people tend to assume that high quality means expensive. But guess what? We're more affordable than you think. Our fees are about the same as one of those chains, but with us, you get my 34 years of experience and my unwavering commitment to quality. Discover for yourself. Call us at 614-262-9588 or go to drkavitko.com. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the Dentally Speaking Show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now or send an email to drkavitko at aol.com. All right, so Mary, Cancer Can't Stop Christmas 2014 just came to a close. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to go home and go to sleep and get up early tomorrow morning and start planning Cancer Can't Stop Christmas 2015. <laughs> okay, thought you were going to say going to Disneyland. I know you I knew you weren't going to Disneyland, but anyway. Okay, so what are your thoughts about this year's event? It was emotional as always for me. Everybody that knows me knows I cry every year. My son said to me, is there ever going to be a year that you don't cry? And I don't think there will be. Well, crying's human and it shows that you care, so I think it's actually kind of cool. Yeah, and I do care. My kids say I care so much that most people don't care as much as I do and are willing to sacrifice to the degree that I do. You told me earlier a story about a little boy that said his mommy didn't want to smile. Can you tell me about that? Yes. One of our families, when the family came up and we were talking and I was smiling, the little boy said that his mom didn't want to smile because her teeth were broken. And I said to her, I said, you will not believe who I'm going to have here today. And so it was really great to be able to tell her that you are going to be here and she's in treatment. And so that makes it even more worthwhile. So we didn't even know. I didn't know that she had this dental problem. And then here you're here. And so divine intervention again. <laughs> <laughs> That's very neat. It's very neat. And so w I did talk to her a little bit. And I think she's going to actually come by the office and, and we'll see. So tell me how people can, again, reach out if they want to donate. They want to help your cause. Not only Cancer Can't Stop Christmas 2015, but all throughout the year to help people with their rent and with their utilities. Because I, I did interview. I spoke to a woman. I believe it was Stephanie who was saying how she's eight months behind on her rent. And she's behind on her utilities, but her landlord has been a godsend because they haven't evicted her, but that's the kind of thing that you work on, right? That is correct. I just recently found out. It's been only a couple weeks that I found out about Stephanie's situation, and fortunately, her landlord has been extending to her grace, and she's going to go through the process of filling out an application, and we'll raise money to be able to help her. And so anyone that wants to help people that are in treatment for cancer, not necessarily saying don't fund research, but we want to help the people, and if someone wants to do that, then they can contact us directly. Our office number is 614 Nine eight five three seven five zero, 985 3750 or they can even call my cell phone, which is 614-805-1253. Visit us online at www.christiansovercomingcancer or www.facebook.com forward slash your collaborative. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you so much, first of all, for letting me come and, and speak to folks and for doing what you do. It's really, really cool, and we're just happy to have you in our lives. Well, I thank you for having me again on the show, and I thank you for all that you have done for me, my family, and what we'll do together in the future to help others. Sounds good. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. All right. We are out of time. So sorry about that. Next week, we will have Farzana Med, the Deputy Director of ODOTS District 6. Please join me next Sunday and every Sunday morning right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from